So with that said, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Commander uh, Robert Ramos from the Mission Valley uh, Regional Command. Commander, thanks for uh, being uh, here uh, for uh, for the meeting. And of course, uh, one of the things we've done in all of the, the meetings uh, when we start mm -hmm. off is some <coughs> residents uh, might be new to the area, might not know exactly what encompasses the Mission Valley. Uh, tell us a little bit about what, what areas do encompass the Mission Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank you, Javier, for having us. Um, the Mission Valley uh, Station is located at uh, the corner of Escobar and Zaragoza. It encompasses uh, about 29.7 square miles. Uh, we start at exit uh, 25, which is Airway, and we go eastbound to exit uh, 35, which is East Lake, exit at East, East Lake. On uh, <clears throat> North Loop, we go from Trowbridge all the way to Inglewood, and then Alameda, we go from Delta to Nevadas, which is basically the city limit. And then on the loop, uh, we go from the loop, uh, the exit from Seca, go all the way to exit 44. So that's our, that is our area. Uh, we currently um, serve about 102,000 uh, citizens in our area. That's a, and it's a pretty big, big area right. uh, there, Commander. And so you have a, a variety of, of different things. I mean, you have businesses, you have residences, uh, and uh, that's what, a lot of different challenges, too. Correct, correct. Um, last year we, uh, the Valley had a good year. We had a, went, our crime was at a minus 4%. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately we had, we did have a lot more uh, fatalities in the other region. We had 23. Um, and as last year we had 75 fatalities citywide. So that, that was one part where we struggled with. And, and of course, you know, I, I know there's many programs that, that are uh, being done throughout the department, because def definitely as far as uh, traffic fatalities, def definitely something that's been a, a concern uh, for the department. But a lot of times too is, you know, we, we, we really do need to remind uh, everybody of what it is that they're doing to try to prevent these fatalities, because it's, it's not it's not necessarily uh, any, anything that's related to an enforcement uh, issue necessarily, but it's the decisions that certain people make at times Correct. when they get behind the wheel of a vehicle. Right. Of course, uh, the, the main thing is uh, if you're drinking, please don't drive. Um, call up a friend, call Uber. There's a lot of different options people can use now. And, and Commander, uh, now I, I know we're, we did pretty, pretty good on crime uh, uh, last year, uh, but nonetheless, crime, of course, still, still happens, mm -hmm. happens in, in uh, every community. What, what were some of the, the crimes that uh, we faced a little bit more there in the, in the Mission Valley area? Uh, the Valley has a, last year we had more thefts and, and assaults, okay. as well as uh, burglary vehicles. Uh, beer runs are always uh, a, uh, a problem citywide. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I know, uh, you know, we, we, we actually had uh, uh, a couple months ago, we actually mm -hmm. talked about a new uh, city ordinance uh, that uh, to try to address mm -hmm. uh, not only the beer runs but just the safety in general at the convenience stores. Because a lot of times the, the, these uh, these thefts uh, occur at convenience stores and certain type of convenience stores, right? Correct. Um, last in December, a convenience store uh, ordinance was passed, in which it entails uh, the convenience stores are now having to help us combat this problem and the way they're doing that is uh, we're going to be implementing a training program for their employees as well as uh, surveillance systems, height markers, uh, visibility requirements in which uh, if an officer is driving by a, a convenience store he can he should be able to look inside and look at the, the clerk to make sure they're okay. Yeah, and, and that makes a lot of sense because unfortunately sometimes you know just for the merchandising purposes uh, windows are blocked and so that sometimes May, may attract somebody or the, or they feel that they might be able to conceal themselves a little bit and and and, and commit something so again just and and all of this uh is, is just trying to add to the safety uh for the employees there the visitors that go to uh to these stores and, mm -hmm. and it also helps us quite a bit because an officer like you're saying uh, their commander driving by can make sure that everything is is looking okay there at the, at the correct store. and also this ordinance is uh we're looking at saving officers time uh, an officer responding to these kinds of calls uh, has taken taken into account his travel time, taking the the report. Uh, for an officer, that amounts to about an hour and 49 minutes. And then the detective side, when they get the case, they also have to go look for evidence, put out emails, uh, look for offenders. So that 
for a detective that was about three hours and three and a half hours of time that could be used on another case. All right, absolutely, Commander. And you know, one of the other uh, cases you were you were mentioning, or a type of uh, crime, and I know we we do see it, of course, throughout the throughout the city, but that was uh, burglary of vehicles. And uh, what what do we see a lot of times with those burglary of vehicles? A lot of times, burglary of vehicles, uh, the vehicle is unlocked. So one thing, if you want to prevent yourself from getting being a victim of this type, type of crime, is one lock your vehicle. Take your valuables inside with you, if you can't. Well, then at least hide them under the seat or in the trunk. Keep them out of the uh, visible, keep, don't, uh, so that an offender doesn't see them and want to break in. Right. right. Uh, and, that's, and that's great information because I, I know uh, a lot of times we, we do see some of the, the reports that do come in on, on some of our burglaries. And unfortunately, it's something where the vehicle is left unlocked. You know, somebody leaves their work computer or other very expensive uh, items in their, in their car. And unfortunately, uh, you know, not now they're they're out that expensive equipment. Uh, where if they would have just taken that in mm -hmm. or put it somewhere that it's not visible, and, and even and even just locked their car, somebody could have just walked onto to uh, to another to vehicle. Another. Correct. So now a lot lot of lot of uh, good information there, uh, Commander. Uh, talking a little bit about the about the Mission Valley Regional mm -hmm. Command. So when we talk about the regional command concept, of course. Uh, it's it's something different. It's not you know so for for those new residents uh, new to uh, to the El Paso area, the regional command concept is not just a substation. It's 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 something different. T tell us a little bit about what's available and w what the what what the regional command is about there at the mission. Uh, mission Valley is like uh, all the other regions. Um, we have a uh, day shift, evening and, patrol and graveyard shift. Our day shift is headed by Lieutenant Lara. Uh, that shift starts at 5 a.m. and ends at 3 p.m. Our evening shift starts at uh, 1 p.m. and ends at uh, 11 p.m. And that's headed by Lieutenant Salcido. And on the graveyard uh, shift, which is headed by uh, Lieutenant Lockhart, starts at 9 p.m. and ends at 7 a.m. Uh, we also have a uh, Central Investigation Division, which is headed by Lieutenant uh, Lucero, to handle all the, the follow-up investigations. And they also encompass the TAC unit, which handles our burglaries, robberies, burglary vehicles. And and that's that's also some important to, uh, that that a lot of people don't don't realize. They're, they're from from the from the command center. You have a variety of investigations that that uh, that do uh, take place. Uh, but also, you know, what, there's there's many times questions that, that that come up from the public of okay, they made a report, uh, and but that's not necessarily all. You once you make a report, there is a little bit of something that you're supposed to do after you file the report. Correct. Right? You can you can call the station. You can call our uh, CID section uh, at 212-8317 and ask for a follow-up uh, on your case. Who is it assigned to? Uh, the sergeant uh, will review the case. If there's workable evidence, he's going to assign it, and the detective will take it from there and, and look for more evidence, get statements, uh, try and ident identify an offender. Um, if he's got enough, then a warrant will be worked up. You know, and that's, that's pretty... Uh, uh, Good important information there, uh, Commander. Because I, I know a lot of times uh, it is something where people just think, "Well, I filed the report, so everything is is taken care of." But uh, they need to make sure that uh, because many times, and, and I know when I worked as as a detective, one of the important things that we try to do, of course, is follow up and, and make contact with that individual to get some more details. And so it's very important that uh, they leave correct information so that we can go ahead and get a hold of them. Uh, the best way that we can get a hold of them, and and that that they also themselves also give us a call, so we can make sure that uh, we can clarify certain things and know that they are interested in continuing to pursue the case. Correct. I suggest that when they first meet with an officer to to make the report, again, make sure their cell phones and their addresses are correct. Their updated information that they're giving that to the officer. Because a lot of times, the detective, if he doesn't have the correct information. He's spending a lot of time trying to locate victims, so that takes away from the investigation. Right. When he can just make a quick phone call and get the information and get the case moving. Okay. Well, you know, a lot, lot of good information there, uh, Commander. And, and one, one of the, the things that's also unique and different about uh, the regional command concept is the involvement with the community. So one of the one of the big uh, involvements that we have is also our citizen advisory boards that, that are there at, at each of the uh, of the commands. 
Th tell us a little bit about what, what that involves, what, what, what the citizens' advisory boards are about. Citizens' advisory boards are, uh, they meet monthly, and okay. what it is is uh, citizens from that region can come and meet with their uh, commander, relate to him or her, what they see out there in the community, uh, concerns, issues, anything they can, that I as a commander can bring up to my officers and, and address. And how, how important is, is that for you as, as a commander, you know, uh, being able to, to have that input from the community? That's sir? extremely important because there are eyes out there. You know, we need their cooperation because we can't be everywhere. So um, for them to come forward and, and give us concerns, it, it's extremely important. No, it, it make, makes a lot of sense. And, you know, Commander, uh, talking about those citizens' uh, 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 advisory uh, uh, boards, how often do they do they meet? You said they meet monthly, uh, and where, where do they meet at? At the region, uh, okay. we will have ours on April fifth, okay. uh, six p.m. on Tuesday. Uh, it's going to be our first in a couple of years because of, because of the, the, the COVID situation. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we'll be meeting there, and we're always looking forward to uh, getting new members. Uh, in order to be a member of the cab, uh, you have to attend three uh, consecutive meetings, and on the third one. Uh, you're voted in, but that is also uh, pursuant to a, to a uh, background check, and, uh, and and like I said, you have to be voted in by the, the members, by the members, of the existing and, members, and and again, the the members of of the citizen developers, members of the community, just general members of the community, right. residents of that 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 uh, that area. But uh, so it is open to the public. Mm -hmm. So anybody from right. the public that wishes to attend can, can from attend that region, from that from that right. area of the Mission Valley. Right. Uh, that's that, that's really uh, really uh, good information there, Commander. So some of the other things, of course, we we have our community services uh, section, right? Correct. That's uh, that's headed by Lieutenant uh, Hernandez. Okay. Uh, we have right now three officers for community service. Uh, they do an outstanding job. Um, one of them is in charge of our cadet program. Um, and that's going to be John Lada, um, and uh, Jeremiah Casillas. He's going to he's in charge of the neighborhood watch program. Well, and uh, I, I guess we'll we'll uh, talk about uh, neighborhood watch a, a little bit. So mm -hmm. so we'll we'll talk to Officer uh, Casillas about that. But you know that, that's that's definitely a, a, a great program mm -hmm. uh, that that is that is very uh, uh, helpful there to uh, to the uh, community. And uh, Officer Casillas, you know, thank, thanks for taking the the time out. And uh, I know you, I know you you all stay very busy, my friend, but. Uh, Tell us a little bit about about the neighborhood watch. Uh, you know, there, there's always some questions that, that we do get from members of the community on how it works. So if, if you could give us a little overview of the program. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Um, <clears throat> the neighborhood watch. What it entails is basically it's a program that uh, it uh, it creates the opportunity for citizens to become involved. Okay, with what our agency does. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, we would need the willingness of citizens uh, to take. Um, excuse me, leadership roles, uh, because we do have a captain and co-captain okay, as part of the watch. And pretty much what they do is they facilitate the operation and function of the program, okay, and that, that helps us as well. Okay. Um, the second thing is, is that they have to also want to be willing to gain and sustain an awareness of what's going on in their neighborhoods. Okay. Uh, the next thing, they're going to have to have a willingness to be able to identify some of the underlying issues okay, that potentially lead to more severe issues. Okay, and the last thing is they're gonna, again, they're gonna want to um, have a willingness to cooperate with us. Okay, in, in, uh, in uh, formulating partnerships so that we can address uh, any prime issues that do occur. And and so uh, one of the, the first steps there for uh, getting into the or, or start a neighborhood watch because that that's uh, a lot of times uh, people think, well, well, you know, uh, I'm sure we have a neighborhood watch. But if they haven't attended a meeting, they probably don't have a neighborhood watch, or they haven't heard anything uh, about it. But, so one of the first steps, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is I guess first talk to your neighbors, right? That's correct. Uh, and so if, if, you, if uh, you or somebody there is, is willing to take, as, as you said, the role of, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll help organize, or I'll be a captain, and uh, who, who, who's willing to be a, a co-captain, we have that. Uh, now they can go ahead and, and, uh, and contact uh, us. That is correct. That correct. And, and again, you know, of course, they, we want these leaders to be able to encourage also other people in their neighborhood to be a part of that program. Okay, because of course, the more people we have, the stronger our program will be. 
Well, and it, and it makes makes a lot of sense. One of the one of the important things I think of, of it, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is is having the ability to know your neighbors and actually have the the contact information. Because a lot of times we might say hi to our neighbors, but we have no idea how the heck to get a hold of them or or any of that. So this gives us the opportunity that we have a list, we have a roster, we have their emails, we have uh, their phone numbers, and, and and we know who they are. Absolutely, absolutely, and of course that that uh, that helps, and uh, become you know, making the, the lines of communication and networking a lot more transparent, uh, you know, eradicating any kind of social barriers that are involved. All right, and um, are there any costs? That that is one question that does come up from time to time to start a neighborhood walk. Well, for a neighborhood watch, um, it is requirement that we do have signs, okay, and it's from wherever the activity is taking place from one end to the other. Okay, okay so usually it's about two signs. Um, the cost, the cost, excuse me, is roughly about thirty-seven dollars, of course, but that cost can be divided among the participants. All right, so it's not per individual, but that means that for the neighborhood, for that, it's thirty about thirty-seven or thirty-seven dollars for for the sign, right? And so there's usually. I guess a sign on each each side or each side of the street, right? That is so correct. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Well, uh, did, if anybody has any questions regarding the uh, the neighborhood watch, is, is there a, a, a number that they can uh, go ahead and uh, call? Absolutely. Uh, they can uh, contact the Mission Valley Regional Command at the number that's been provided by uh, Commander Ramos, or uh, they can even get a hold of me uh, at my office. Uh, my number is going to be 915-212-8312. Okay. And, and again, uh, th thank you so much for, for uh, giving us that, an explanation. That, that's the question that comes up uh, quite, a, quite a bit out of this. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Thank you. And, and Commander, so, you know, again, a, a great program there with the Neighborhood Watch. Uh, yes. but, you know, it's, it's uh, something that, uh, I mean, it's, it's been around a, a long time, and it really helps. Correct, correct. And we also have another uh, program that, uh, from our community service. It's going to be the Cadet Program, and okay. that's going to be headed by Officer Lada. Okay. And, and of course, joining us as, as well as, as Officer Lada, and uh, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to know Officer Lada for, for a few years there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Officer Lada, tell us a little bit about, about the, uh, it's, and it's called the uh, Public Safety Cadet Program, correct? That is correct. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me out here. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a new program. Um, it's, it's the same as we used to call it, Police Explorers. Mm -hmm. um, this new program entails more as a, law enforcement career portion of it. Uh, it's for young men and, and women aged from 14 to 20 years of age uh, who are, want to pursue the career in law enforcement. And, and what are the requirements to, to be able to participate in, in the uh, cadet program? Uh, we have a couple of requirements uh, with this new program. Uh, first of all, it has to be the age of 14 and 20. Okay. I uh, have a uh, uh, C plus uh, at school. We okay. do require uh, academics. Uh, then there's another one, which is a physical ability test. Um, it's not a pass or fail test. It's just want to see where, where you stand at. We want to see progression as we go along. Well, and I think that's, that's actually a, a great benefit because I know a, a lot of times we do have uh, individuals that are interested in law enforcement. And one of the challenges that, that many people sometimes face in, in law enforcement or, or trying to uh, uh, get into law enforcement is a physical fitness, and, and part of it is that uh, they've never been guided as far as to the training or how to prepare. So, you know, th this this can help an individual as, as young as 14 years of age to start, you know, shaping their life and, and their habits to be able to, to have a successful lifestyle to, to be able to uh, to be a law enforcement. Yeah, right, and we're just trying to get them ready for the academy. They want to pursue their career. Once they go to the academy, it's not something surprising that the commitment or was part of it but our physical is one of the most important that we have to go through. okay now what, one, one of the questions I know that may may come up from time to time is if there is a cost to uh, to uh, be part of the uh, cadet program there is a cost it's a fifteen dollars it's not for us it's for the public safety uh, for the insurance in case uh, there's injuries uh, they're covered by the supplementary insurance okay so it's a, it's a minimal cost. It's fifteen dollars that we require by by public safety. And and how how often do the do the cadets uh, meet? Uh, we're going to start meeting once a week. Um, as the Mission Valley, we're going to be starting uh, next week. Okay, uh, great. Thursdays, Thursdays, at six p.m. 
So is there anybody who's welcome to come in? Um, more than welcome to show up at the Mission Valley Research Command at 6 p.m. Okay, so Thursday at, at 6 p.m. And, and it's going to be next Thursday or this? Next Thursday. Next start, Thursday. Seven. Okay. And so anybody that, that is interested, ages 14 to, to 20, 20. Uh, it can be considered to uh, to be part of this right. uh, of this program. Well, that, that's that's a lot of uh, uh, great great information. Anything anything else you'd like to add on on that part of it, sir? Uh, Mission Valley has been uh, travel a lot uh, competition wise. Uh, we go out there and represent El Paso very well. Uh, we go to state and nationals. Uh, we want to continue doing that. Uh, representing El Paso, uh, it's a cadet goes through uh, police scenarios. Uh, they compete against other states, uh, cities, and El Paso has been very well known. So we want to continue. If anybody who wants to join, they're more than welcome. Uh, if they have any questions, they can call me in my uh, office. It's 915-212-8370. And, and, and if you, you don't mind just repeating that, that number once again for us, sir? Sure, it's going to be 915-212-8370. Okay, a lot, lot of uh, great information there, Officer mm -hmm. Lada, and and again, thank, thanks, thanks for uh, taking the uh, the the time out. Of a lot of lot of great information, and a lot, lot of things are happening too, Commander. Uh, uh, now, so we now, of course, we're we're I think getting a a, a little bit over the, the that uh, time that we had uh, because of COVID. So we're right. starting to be able to have some more meetings. Uh, meetings. So our our cap starts up uh, next, next week next mm -hmm. week as well. Our uh, uh, ex our cadet program starts also next week, so a lot, lot of a uh, lot of uh, great programs. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the things that that we just uh, started, Commander, is actually our uh, Citizens Police Academy. So that that program as well had uh, been a little bit dormant because of of the uh, pandemic, and we just actually had uh, last uh, night we we actually had our our first session again. So we have uh, uh, about. 14 uh, members from different parts of, of our of our community uh, learning a bit about uh, the uh, the police department and uh, many times we have uh, many of these uh, uh, individuals that come and, and uh, become volunteers with us or join some of uh, the other programs that we have uh, so that's a great great opportunity yeah it's great uh, yeah we're always looking for volunteers um, uh, you, if you're interested in volunteering, you can come to headquarters or call 212-4009 and speak to uh, Astrid Mann, and she can uh, direct us, direct you to uh, one of our vo uh, volunteer programs. Uh, it could be uh, the Volunteers and Patrol uh, section, uh, which is where the uh, citizens would uh, actually drive a, a, a Police car, but it's it's decaled with a it's, it's volunteer. Marked, yeah, it's it's it's, right. it's marked a, a little bit differently, and and so uh, you know and that that definitely is a, a, a brand new program, and actually we've been actually uh, we're still in in part of a, a one of our of the training phases, but we've actually been in the in the field. So right. uh, these these volunteers actually do get a uniform, uh, uh, as as you know, Commander. It's right. a and it's a white shirt. Uh, they do they they do have a patch, but the patch. Uh, is uh, like a stop sign. It's an octagon there uh, that says uh, civilian on there. Uh, there is no badge uh, they, they, uh, on it, but uh, they're basically uh, like a mobile neighborhood watch. So a lot of what what they're what they're uh, doing uh, is uh, reporting anything that looks out of the ordinary. Uh, so they're they're not taking any type of enforcement action. The, this is a a program that is designed to be extra eyes and ears out there for uh, for the department and 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 just not not even uh, necessarily also just uh, crime type of issues but quality of life issues. So if you have something of maybe a possible uh, trash problem or some other type of issue that is happening there in the in the community, our uh, VIP volunteers will go ahead and report that through uh, the 311 app and also on, on a log sheet and, and of course that's something that we know okay there's maybe something here we need to go ahead and, uh, and take a look at. Correct and uh, people can always go to EPP.org for information on uh, whole, a lot of our services as a police department. Oh yeah the, the, absolutely the website does have a, a lot of uh, information and again if, if you are uh, interested in learning something more about the department maybe you have a question Remember, you can always uh, send us your questions at SPD at El Paso, Texas .gov. And also, as a reminder, we are going to be opening it up to questions here in a short bit. So if you do have a question, 
we're going to ask that you uh, please uh, raise your hand there in the Teams meeting uh, when uh, you do uh, that icon of uh, raising your hand and you are selected to address your question, you're going to have to unmute yourself, wait a few moments before you begin speaking, and then we will be able to, uh, to hear uh, your question. So uh, if, if you all uh, might have some questions uh, that are joining us to today, uh, we'll be uh, opening that up uh, here in a, in a short while. And again, you can always send us also the questions to ASPD at ElPasoTexas.gov and also to our other uh, sites there. But uh, uh, Commander, what are some of the other, uh, I guess, uh, accomplishments you, you've, you've had here at, at, the, at the Mission Valley? I mean, there, there's a lot of great successes here with the advisory board. You, we, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, great officers working there. Obviously, Correct. the crime has been important. Correct. Um, we also have what is called the School-Based Law Enforcement Program. It's a, an agreement we've reached with the Isleta Independent School District. Mm -hmm. um, it would entail uh, hiring officers to work the, the schools on their off-duty off time. And that's uh, been a great help because, one, it alleviates uh, patrol officers having to respond to these high schools. Uh, right. When the officer's there, he can make the report. And also, uh, the kids get to, you know, get, get to talk to the officers and, and see, you know, we're, we're people just like them. And they get to communicate and, and bring forth their concerns and their issues and develop, like, a, a, communi a community partnership, which is also one of our core values. We're always seeking to... Uh, partnership with our community so that that's also a great benefit for that program no I, absolutely there uh, uh, commander I, I think that that's that's been a program that that has been uh like like you mentioned it has been something that that's been uh really uh the valley's been responsible for for for, for quite a while now uh but it, it really helps it really has is able to create that relationship where mm -hmm. uh they're able to see a police officer in a different light and have that that first uh hand uh, for lack of a better word access to to maybe ask that officer a concern or a question that mm -hmm. they may have and and actually also to to have that rapport of reporting things that they see or reporting some that correct crimes. Yeah, correct it's a good out it's a good resource to have you know you know one, one of the other uh, things that that uh, that we have and it's actually a commander uh, you know program that's been around uh, a long time but just you know, like the challenges we've had with some of the other uh, programs uh, due to the uh, pandemic is our, our Crime Stoppers program. So our Crime Stoppers program, of course, is, has been active, but uh, one thing that uh, some people may not know is that there is a Campus Crime Stoppers program. And so part of what, what happens with the uh, Campus Crime Stoppers uh, uh, program, it is something that is open to uh, students uh, from the, the various uh, schools that are uh, interested in uh, learning a little bit more or, or taking a, an active uh, role in uh, letting us know what what are what is important to them. So it's very very similar to to almost how the cadet program works on in the uh, campus crime stoppers uh, program. Uh, we look for individuals, maybe individuals that that they're in the school, maybe are part of the journalism program or have some some other type of uh, of interest or people that do have interest in in law enforcement. And what uh, they uh, do uh, they can form a club in their in their uh, specific uh, school and be able to uh, uh, do announcements there of maybe uh, prevention uh, issues or maybe a, a crime working with uh, the SRO there that that may have been important to to that uh, specific school. So you're going to be hearing a little bit more of, about that. And uh, of course, if you do have uh, questions on that, you can always send it to Ask PD at El Paso. Uh, Texas.gov. You can also, of course, uh, send uh, an email to uh, uh, PD Crime Stoppers at El Paso uh, Texas.gov, and we can talk more about uh, uh, the uh, Campus uh, Crime Stoppers program. But it's something that's open to uh, students uh, throughout the uh, the community, and Crime Stoppers, of course, a nonprofit organization that benefits uh, uh, all of law enforcement and, and the community. But we do have a, a few questions uh, here, uh, Commander, that, that have uh, come in. So uh, uh, one question, I'm, I'm not sure if they do want to state their, their uh, full name or not, so I'll just go with, with their first name. Uh, but it is from uh, Kate, and she had a question about what prevention measures uh, her family and her can take when traveling out of town for extended periods of time. 
uh, uh, she states, there has been a string of uh, burglaries in my neighborhood, and we have our lights on on timers. Uh, we have our uh, phone tree updated, but are there any services that the police department provides, and if so, what, what are they? Uh, we have what is called a code watch, which entails uh, the, the citizen will let us know when they're going to be out of town, their address, um, what vehicles are in the driveway, uh, are there going to be lights on, are there pets? Uh, so that way we know uh, to go by the house and check on it. And then we'll know if anything's out of sort. So, and then we can take action. You know, and, and the, speaking of uh, code watches, that's actually also something that our volunteers and patrol also help us with. So on, on these code watches, uh, our, our VIPs will also uh, uh, drive by. And if they see something that looks suspicious, someone looks out of, out of uh, place, they will immediately report that uh, through the uh, police radio to the uh, working uh, units that are, that are out there. And so one of those units can go ahead and investigate that uh, a little bit further. But it is it is a program, of course, there, there's no cost to it. Right. It's free. Um, all you have to do is just uh, let us know when, when, when you'll be out of town and when you'll come back. And and, you, and and like you said, you can fill that out uh, online. So you Correct. can go to uh, eppd.org. You can also uh, just uh, call the uh, regional command. Correct. Correct. And you can talk to uh, our desk officer. Just call 212-0400. And our desk officer will be more than happy to take down the information and relay it to our uh, patrol ship. Okay, well, that's, that's really good, good information. Time in six years, the El Paso Police Department finished the year with less officers than it started with. However, for several years, the city has focused on increasing the police department's ranks. The department had 23 less officers than it started with by the end of 2021. That is despite 29 new recruits joining the force. There are 1,147 police officers in the department today, but the city of El Paso hopes to have more than 1,300 by 20. 2025. Police officials say public perception of police has changed, which has led to a decrease in the number of younger applicants looking to become police officers. In addition, they say there is national competition to get quality applicants to join the department.